Welcome to our lecture online. So what is dilution of precision, also known as DOP, D-O-P? And notice we have different kinds of DOPs. We have, where are they? Right here, we have P-DOP, H-DOP, V-DOP, and T-DOP. Well, they're needed to calculate a 95% factor of measurements taken to be expected to be between certain values, zero and an upper limit. In other words, we expect certain kind of accuracies in our range measurements. And of course, we already saw in the previous video that those range me measurements error errors can be calculated in part by calculating the UERE. And the UERE is made up of the URE and the UEE. And we saw that already here that the UERE is equal to the square root of URE squared plus UE squared. And in the previous video, we showed you how those were calculated. But then that is being multiplied by the DOP to get a one sigma number. In other words, we can expect that the range values will be somewhat distributed like this. And of course, if you want 95% of all the values to fall between certain range measurements, so this is going to be the error that you expect, and you want to be within that error of a 95% error, so to speak. Well, in that respect, what we first do is we calculate a single sigma. And of course, when we have a single sigma, we have about 68% of all the readings, all the measurements that fall within that range. And that, of course, is not good enough. If only 68% of your range measurements fall within what you expect, that would not be good enough. You want at least 95% of your range me measurements to fall within expected values. So to get the one sigma figure, we multiply something called the DOP, which is what, what we call dilution of precision, with the UERE to get that one sigma value. Now, the DOP values will depend upon what measurement we're taking. If we're in the 3D spherical measurement, so if we go from our uh, receiver out in any direction, three, three dimensions, so north, east, and, and, and up, for example, then we simply take the PDOP value, and that is equal to 2.14. So whatever your UERE value was, we multiply it times 2.14 to get the one sigma variation in the expected range calculations. If we work with the horizontal value only in two dimensions, then our HDOP, H for horizontal, is equal to 1.07. So we take our UERE, multiply it by 1.07 to get the one sigma value of the variation in the range measurements. And on the VDOP by itself, we have the vertical measurement by itself. We multiply the UERE by 1.85 to get the one sigma. And of course, we then deal with the time later if we want, again, a 95% certainty range of the time measurements as well. So then, to calculate the 95% certainty error, with other words, how far out do we have an error that, so that 95% of all our measurements fall within that range, we take the number 1.614, which in the three dimensions for PDOP times the UERE, and of course the result is in meters, will give us a 95% range. So that's a way to take the three dimensional direction and turn it from a one sigma into essentially a two sigma problem. Or, no, it's not a problem, it's a two sigma uh, range estimation. If we use the HDOP, then we multiply the UERE and the, uh, if we want the, the two dimensional 95% range of our error mes uh, measurements, then we can say that if we multiply the HDOP times the UERE and multiply times 1.731, we end up with a range value so that we know that 95% of our measurements will fall within that range value. And if we work in the vertical alone, we take the UERE, multiply times the VDOP, multiply times 1.96, and then we turn a one sigma range into a two sigma range, 95% of all values in the vertical direction. So that is how we then estimate what our range errors are going to be in our measurements based upon the UERE, which is of course based upon the URE and the UEE. And that is the lengthy process the receiver has to go through in order to figure out how to calculate the best range values we can based upon the atmospheric conditions and all the other errors that will sneak in into your calculations and we try to deal with it the best we can. And notice that it also depends upon what mode you're in, are you in single channel, double channel, using Y code, M code, CA code, all that will affect the values you can expect 
in your range measurements when they're all adjusted for the various components that we have to. And that is how we calculate accurate positions for the receiver, in other words, through accurate estimations and calculations of the range between the available satellites and the receiver. And that is how it's done.